Okay, in this short video, we are going to do a temperature conversion. We're going to convert a value from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. This is going to require us to write a program that gets some input from the user and does some basic arithmetic with that input. The formula that we need is given here. So a temperature in degrees Celsius is 5 divided by 9 multiplied by the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. The way the program should work is as follows. The program is going to be called temp, so if we run the program, it should start by prompting the user to enter a temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Let's say the user enters the value 85. In this case, the program should do the conversion and produce the output as follows. Notice that it prints back the original degrees in Fahrenheit as well as the converted temperature, which is 29.4 degrees Celsius in this case. So notice the output here has one decimal place of accuracy. Okay, so now that we understand the problem, let's go ahead and write a C program to do this temperature conversion. I've got this folder called temperature on my desktop, and I'm going to put my C source file inside this folder. I'm going to create a new text document, which I'm just going to call temp.c. Now the .c here is important, all of our C source files must end with this .c extension. I'm going to use a text editor called TextPad to write the source for my program. Alright, so what do we put in our source file? Well, our C programs always have this special main function, which is uh, int main void. This is just the entry point for the program. So when we eventually compile the source file and run the program, the execution begins at this entry point. The standard also specifies that we should return a value at the end of this main function. And this will make more sense when we learn about functions, but the return zero essentially means that this program has finished executing and the execution has been successful. So our code statements are gonna go in here, um, underneath the start of the main function and before that return zero. Now, one of the things that our program is gonna do is it's gonna print some output to the screen. And there is a special header file called standardio.h and our C programs always have this hash include standardio.h. This header file contains information about the input output functions like printing and, and scanning, so printing output to the screen or scanning uh, input from the keyboard. And if we're going to be using functions like the printf function, then we should provide this hash include standardio.h at the top of the program so that the compiler can just check that we're calling the, the print function correctly. All right, now the prompt that we should provide the user is enter temperature in f. And so I'm going to go ahead and in my printf statement just say enter temperature in f. And I think we put these in parentheses and put a colon here. And that's going to be the prompt that the user sees. So when you run the program, we're going to print this out for the user. Now, a really good strategy when you're writing programs is to compile the programs as often as possible. It can be really tempting to try to write all of the source code for the program in one go and then try to run the program. But an advantage of writing a little bit of source at a time and then compiling and running is that if you have made some mistake and you've introduced an error, if you've only added a small amount of code, it's much simpler for you to debug that and work out where the error was introduced. So in fact, what I'm going to do is compile and run my program now. At this point, even though all I'm doing is just printing out this prompt. Okay, so in order to compile this program, I'm going to launch the developer command prompt. And you can see the command prompt here. And I'm going to use the cd command to change the directory so that it is the directory that contains my source file. If I type dir, I can see that this temp.c file is stored in that directory. It's currently zero bytes because I haven't saved the file yet, but if I save the file with control S, you'll see that if I run dir again, now we've got 96 bytes stored on file. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile this. So the compiler is CL. Um, we'll then use this W4 option, which just indicates to the compiler that we want to see various warning messages, uh, if there are any problems with our source file, and then we specify the name of the source file, which is temp.c. And all going well, this will compile. Let's go ahead and run this, so temp. And sure enough, this program does what we expect. It prints out this prompt to the user. Great, okay. 
Let's go back to the program now. We need to introduce some variables. Let's introduce one variable which is going to store, if I spell Fahrenheit correctly, this is the variable that is going to store the user's input. And I've declared this variable to be of type int because if you look at the problem description, it says that the user is going to enter a whole number. So this is the appropriate type for me to use here because the int type allows us to store whole numbers. Let's go ahead and declare another variable. This is going to be called Celsius. Celsius. And in this variable, we're actually going to store the converted temperature value. So this variable is going to store kind of the result of our calculation. Now, I've made this variable of type double because if you recall from the problem description, the resulting translated temperature should be a floating point value. And the double type allows us to store floating point values. Okay, so once we produce the prompt to the user, we then want to use the scanf function to read in a value that the user types at the keyboard. And the value that I want to read in is Fahrenheit. And when you call the scanf function, you have to use a conversion specifier. Now, percent %d is the correct conversion specifier to use if the user is going to type in a whole number, which they are uh, in this particular program. So also when you call the scanf function, you need to use the ampersand operator immediately to the left of the variable into which you want the input to be stored. So uh, in this case, we're going to store the input that the user types in in the variable called Fahrenheit. And in fact, even before I do the computation, what I'm going to do now is just print out the resulting line. So do you remember from the original problem, the output of the program should be the degrees in Fahrenheit is, and then the corresponding degrees in Celsius. So here I'm going to say percent %d, capital F, and this is going to be Fahrenheit. So this statement would print out whatever value is stored in the variable Fahrenheit, that value would replace the percent %d in my output here. So this will print the Fahrenheit degrees, followed by a capital F, then we'll print out is, and now we want to print out the temperature in Celsius, and the problem tells us this should be a floating point value. So we're going to use the percent %f conversion specifier, then a capital C in this case. And I've got two conversion specifiers here. I've got percent %d, right? And that is going to be um, replaced by the value stored in Fahrenheit. The next conversion specifier, percent %f, is going to be replaced by the variable, by the value stored in the variable Celsius. Now I haven't initialized Celsius yet, so let me go ahead and give that an initial value. I'll say Celsius equals 0.0. .0. Okay, let me go ahead and run this program again. What I, what I would expect to see is no matter what value I type in, we're going to print out 0.0, .0 in terms of the translated value because all I've done is I've stored that value zero in Celsius. Let's go ahead and do that. I can just use the up arrow to cycle through my previous commands. We'll compile this. Now notice the compiler actually gave me a warning message here. The warning is about the use of the scanf function. Um, this is a, a quirk of the Microsoft compiler. What I'm actually going to do is just select this CRT secure no warnings and at the very top of my source file I'll use a hash define. This is going to suppress that warning message. And sure enough, if I go and compile this again, you'll see the warning message has disappeared. Let's run the program, and you'll notice that no matter what I type in, the output is going to be 0.000c. Now we get six decimal places here because that is by default the number of decimal places that um, the C program will generate. If you look at the problem statement, we should only generate one decimal place. And it's very easy to format the output. We can put a 0.1 in here. And if I go and run this again, by recompiling and rerunning, again, no matter what I type in, notice that now we get zero Celsius, but we just have one decimal place. So this is looking really good. The only part left now is to complete this statement, right? How are we gonna initialize Celsius? And if we look at the equation, the formula we were given for converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius, it's tempting to do something like this, where we just translate this formula directly. So this is going to be 5 divided by 9 multiplied by the temperature in Fahrenheit, which is Fahrenheit, minus 
32. So this looks pretty good. Okay, Celsius equals 5 over 9 times Fahrenheit minus 32. That certainly matches the formula. But if we go ahead and save and then compile and run this, we're not going to get the output we expect. Let's enter 85 Fahrenheit. It's still giving me 0 as output. And the reason for this is actually to do with this operation here. In C, you have to be cautious when you're using the division operator if both of the operands, that is both of the values on either side of the operator, are whole numbers, then the result is going to be a whole number. So this expression 5 divided by 9 is going to evaluate to 0. Now you and I know that 5 divided by 9 is actually 0 0.555 recurring. But because both of the operands are integers, that fractional part disappears. And so we're just going to end up with 0 here. Now that's no good, so the way around that is to perform this arithmetic using double precision. And we can either do that by explicitly using double literals, like 5.0 and 9.0. Um, there are other ways we can do this. We could use a cast here, and we could, for example, cast 5 to a double, and cast 9 to a double. That changes their types. Um, and it turns out that, in fact, only one of these values needs to be converted to a double. So this would also work perfectly well, because if you have one double and one integer in an arithmetic expression, then the integer gets automatically converted to a double. But I think it looks nice just to do this, and I'm pretty sure that if we go ahead and check this, the program is now going to be functioning correctly. So if we enter, let's say, 85 degrees, we get 29.4 degrees Celsius as output, and this is our completed Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion program.